Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Faye Answered Questions, the podcast where the Faye family tries to answer questions about life. Joining me on today's episode is my lovely parents, as always. Hi. Hello, fans. <laughs> and uh, joining us this week is my brother, Ben. What's up, everyone? <laughs> All right. So the first question uh, that we have um, this week is what should your work-life balance look like? So I'll defer to the parents in the room who have the most working experience um, out of all of us. What should your work-life balance look like? Yes, you should have a work-life balance. Uh, You should not necessarily be a workaholic, nor should you be a slug or a couch potato. Uh, No work, no eat. That's how the world works. Uh, Government handouts are going to become a thing of the past, so don't get reliant on those. Um, You need a work-life balance to remember those that are near and dear to you so you can make time for them and make them feel important and special in your life. Um, you You do have to have a balance if you work and don't have fun or don't do something you enjoy or take that downtime your burnout happens so fast. Um, Being young, your burnout may not happen as quickly as, say, being our age and not keeping that balance in mind. Um, But you do have to take time for yourself so that you can be recharged, rejuvenated, ready to face the stresses of your work life. I mean, it's what I tell a lot of the people that I work with, I give them the airplane speech, which is when you're on a flight and the hostess is doing their, the host or hostess is walking through doing the safety instructions. What do they say about if you lose cabin pressure and your air mask falls down? They don't tell you to take care of the people beside you or your kids. They say, put that on first and then help those who need help. You have to take care of you and have that bit of downtime. Protect that. Nobody else is going to advocate for you, but you take care of yourself so that you can then be a better employee, a better boss, a better person to be around. So, yeah, um, one thing I've noticed in working, you know, you you know, go to work eight hours a day or whatever, and then you come back and you got to do like uh, house chores and that sort of stuff, clean, cook dinner. Um, and that doesn't leave you a whole lot of time, you know, just for yourself. So it, it's easy to slip into like, okay, I'm off work. I've, you know, cooked dinner. I've, you know, cleaned all the dishes up, done laundry. And you may only have, you know, a couple hours, uh, you know, before bed. So it's, it's easy just to like sit on the couch, put on Netflix for two hours and then go to bed and wake up, rinse and repeat kind of thing so uh part of this question is uh what it would i guess kind of hobbies or things do you do for yourself that aren't necessarily like putting on netflix um, um right when you come home from work i can i can talk about that a little bit i guess um so you know like mom and dad said you do have to have that balance um in your life between working and taking that time for yourself um you know from a personal standpoint, I, I definitely can, can feel the, the thing that's that, uh, you know, you come home and you just, you, you feel like you have more work at home, even when you get done with your actual job. Um, and you just got to be careful and mindful about that and not get lazy um, with the chores around your house, because that will also cause extra stress um, and anxiety in your life. Um, as far as other hobbies, um, literally, you could do anything that keeps your mind uh, active, uh, and engaged, uh, rather than, you know, Netflix, uh, cause that's just mind numbing and, and dull. Um, but with that, you have to be careful that your hobbies, uh, don't end up taking all of the time away from the other people that are in your life. Uh, so, you know, you don't want to get, uh, sucked into, um, you know, work and then coming home and going, all right, now it's me time. I can do the hobby, which I actually enjoy a lot. Um, and then and then forgetting that there's other people around you that also would like to spend time with you and um 
you can fall into a uh i don't know what the word i'm looking for trap. Is. Uh, you can fall into right. a trap yeah a trap of 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 neglect um and selfishness and you forget that other people uh rely on you to make them feel special as well and those people can also help you uh recharge and rejuvenate uh your life so you can go about and do the things that you like doing as well yeah, yeah. i agree with that that's good, well, good. i completely agree with that here's um, another thing sorry to cut you off joshy um that's all good <laughs> One thing I do is where we live, we're fortunate to have walking trails, biking trails around the city. Um, And for me, I can ride my bike to work. It's six miles, takes me 25 minutes. It it becomes a, 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 a race against myself to see if I can beat that every morning that I ride my bike. Are you trying to get sweaty before you get to work? (laughs) <laughs> we have facilities to take care of those issues dear um <laughs> but it's stuff like that and then i am able to ride home and i have about a 30 minute ride home and it gives me that exercise that i need so i don't have to carve out that time i'm killing two birds with one stone i'm getting my exercise in the morning and in the afternoon on the way to and from work It gives me time to clear my head before I get home and to kind of decompress from the day and be ready to hit the, hit the house ready to do whatever it is that we need to do or just spend time with your father and just kind of, it puts me in a better headspace. (laughs) Or, you know, I have the long list of, oh, let's get this done before it gets dark tonight. (laughs) Right. I mean, if you can combine things that help you relax to and from work type of thing or you know, whatever. I find that works for me. And also taking your your house chores and breaking them up instead of trying to do them all whatever. So back in pioneer days, I know people laughed about this and you kids kind of laughed about it. Growing up, I'd be like, okay, this is laundry day. This is clean the house day. But if you break it up, It doesn't seem like it's such a big deal. That's true because we around here, I guess at my house, we've gotten, we got, we did at a point get into um, (laughs) waiting to do everything until the weekend when, you know, we were both off or so, or, you know, when she had her different, when my wife had her different schedule, um, and she would do it on her off days. So, you know, we would both come home, whatever our off days just ended up being and look at the kitchen and go, Ugh. or look at the backyard and go, Ugh, no, I don't want to mow or the bathroom or whatever. Cause we all, we thought we had to get it all done in the two days that we had off. Um, but instead you can just, you know, say Tuesday or whatever, you get home from work. All right, clean the kitchen up or better yet, just clean the kitchen as you go cooking dinner. And then another day we should have looked and been like, all right, so we came home like Fridays are my early days off work. So what I could have done was come home on a Friday and been like, oh, okay. I had a, I'm home an hour earlier. Uh, let's mow the lawn real fast, then shower up and, and go from there and, and, you know, break it up. Like mom said, instead of waiting and being kind of lazy and worn out from the work week and then doing everything, trying to get everything done on a Saturday and Sunday. I kind of I want to go back a little bit to what you were saying, Mom. That your hobby kind of is riding your bike around um, to and from work. Um, one thing that I've learned a super important lesson in this year has been just how much your your physical health affects mental health. And with the you know, I would say like if you're trying to find a hobby, find something that's you know active. Um, it's going to keep you you know physically fit because the more you know fit you are the more the more that it, it affects your mental health in a, in a positive way. Well, the more you exercise, you're going to release those endorphins anyway. So it's going to make you feel good. Even if you don't feel like doing that physical activity, make yourself do it. And it's, it's not hard to go, okay, I don't feel like it, but I'm going to walk around the block. And don't just saunter and stroll. You need to do the Fay walk. 
you need to <laughs> you need to the do airport the walk, walk. That I have to do to keep up with you guys and your long legs where I look like the road runner and you guys are just mm-hmm. taking steps. You need to really <laughs> get that heart rate going and move quickly and you'll do, you'll do a block and go, Ooh, let me do another one. Let me do another one. Um, you know, it, it's something simple. It doesn't have to be a gym membership. It doesn't have to be a big ordeal. It can be something small, but as long as you're doing that, physical activity you're getting your oxygen flowing through your body you're getting your blood flowing you're you're getting that activity that you need where is you if your job is a sedentary job where you're sitting at a desk all day you need to be able to do that so you don't right. get the rear end spread uh, i can yeah i can talk about that too i have been going through some mental <laughs> I guess health things recently. Um, but that's a topic for another podcast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I did end up forcing myself to go for runs around the neighborhood. Um, and granted when I started those, you know, I, I, um, I would sit there and and do my, you know, dynamic warm ups on that. So I didn't pull a hammy cause I'm old now. And, um, (laughs) And I would sit there and I would be doing those. I'm like, I don't want to do this. This is dumb. I'm, I just don't feel like running. And then I would just be like, no, go ahead. So then I get halfway through the run and I'd start feeling a lot better. Um, and then I get home from it. And, and I did, I did, you know, exercise does help keep your mind you know, refreshed and, and off of uh, whatever's, you know, potentially messing you up in mm-hmm. your mental. Um, and what, you know, one important thing to do, I guess, uh, with that is if you are running or whatever don't you can time yourself but don't get discouraged uh necessarily by the time that you did it in um just look at it look at it as something that you can improve on um but don't let that discourage you from continuing to exercise to keep your mind healthy and refreshed um that's a little hypocritical of me because i do need to get back into it but mm. um, um that, that... Sorry, mom, do you mind if I go? No, go ahead, honey. Um, so that, that reminds me of a, a quote I saw somewhere recently. I can't remember if it was YouTube or somewhere else, but uh, the person speaking said that uh, motivation isn't the thing that comes first. Um, you have to make that decision to act, and then the motivation comes afterwards, um, which is something that I didn't think about until recently. Um, Dad, been, did you, you know, say that? That sounds like something you would say. No, that came from a Navy SEAL. Oh, well, there, there's your... I oh, can there tell that. I know that quote. I know who said that quote. <laughs> yeah, that, that quote's been something I, that's been on my mind a lot more recently, um, especially now that I've had kind of a steady work schedule where, where I'll go work eight hours and then you know, come back and like, oh, what do I do with my day? Do I, like, and I'm caught between that decision of like, do I just, you know, watch Netflix for a little bit or do I go, you know, do something active? Um, and it's, you know, that going out, you know, like at first you'd be like, oh, I really don't want to, you know, go on this run or, you know, go to the gym today. But, you know, once you're there and you start doing something, that's when you're like, okay, yeah, this is a lot of, like, I want to be doing this. Well, and along that same vein, you're um, you're going to be active. People are going to see you being active and they may ask to join you while you're doing it, which is nice to have company. Um, my girlfriend and I, we, because of our, well, her family schedule, she has smaller children. Um, so every other weekend we make a point to carve out time for us. And so we will go for a walk around the lake or whatever. Then we'll have lunch, which yes, I get kind of defeats the purpose, but whatever. <laughs> well, it we depends on what you're have... eating for lunch. Well, it depends on what the, the last week at, at work was. So, um, so um, you're eating a then... whole plate of pasta afterwards. No, <laughs> just chips and salsa. It's okay. <laughs> oh, that's fine. No, um, but having that friend go with you, you end up, you know, talking and visiting and we set a fast pace because we both are fast walkers 
And before you know it, we've, <laughs> we've gone through and we're, and we're like, Oh, okay, we're done. And we have beat our own time around the lake a couple of times, which has been nice, but you have somebody else there with you. And that's always a, a different experience to have a friend with you while you're working out. That makes it fun. And, kind of breaks up any monotony that might come. And for girls, it's a safety factor. We think about that kind of stuff. All right. It's it's about at the uh, 16 minute mark, but Dad has something to say. Sorry. Go ahead. I have one thing. Listen up, kids. Here comes the knowledge. Life <laughs> is 24 hours a day. So you plan 24 hours a day. You know you've got to work eight hours. You know you've got to sleep. Well, for most of you, you think you have to sleep eight hours. You don't, but whatever. Uh, you get by on six. So six hours sleeping, eight hours working, 14 hours. You got 10 hours left. What are you doing with it? You know? So, yeah, you got to have a work-life balance so you can spend an hour at the gym. That gives you nine hours left. You know, so what are you going to do with that other nine hours? Yes, you can, you need to, and you should take time for those important to you, and you should make time to spend time with them. Take some time to do some chores every day, get that done, you know, that kind of stuff. But you've also got some other time that you can read and add to your learning, watch YouTube videos, add to your learning. Start a side hustle, start a side business and spend an hour or two hours a day on that. Earn some extra money so you can kick your nine to five job. That obviously is a whole nother podcast because I've got so much to say on that. But, you know, there's there's a lot to do. The thing about it is you need to plan. I mean, I'm not a overly big planner. Like I don't plan every minute uh, like mum does. Mum plans every minute of every day and you know, can drive people nuts with their plans. But, you know, you've got to have a basic of you've got 24 hours, break the 24 hours down and figure out what part of what day you're going to spend doing what. Let me let me sum up by saying just plan some stuff. You know, you can plan your day to and make the planning in your parameters. So I'm going to spend eight hours working eight hours sleeping. I've got eight hours left to spend. This is how I'm going to spend it and move from there. Uh, anyway, that's what you can do. I, you don't, you know, and, and balance it, balance it between work, rest and recreation. That three hours or uh, two hours in a W. Take your pick. Close enough. All right, moving on. All right. Uh, the the next question, it comes from an, a very interesting article that I read recently um, where it said within the next 20 years, there is about a 50% chance or more of medicine being developed, which would um, increase the longevity of humans. So this isn't, you know, necessarily like a stay young forever pill, but, but my question is, would you, would you take that, you know, option if you could, you know, either, you know, stay young forever or increase your lifespan, um, would you be for it or against it? I don't know. That seems like it's pretty loaded. Um, I don't know if it's a, a, as simple as, you know, and cut and dry as, yes, I would take it. No, I wouldn't. Um, I guess for me, it would depend on maybe how life's going or situations, um, you know, in, situations in your life. I feel that, you know, there's been plenty of movies along the same lines. Um, people either getting immortality or, or extended lifespans. And in those, they end up having to watch some of their loved ones die while they stay young or, you know, live forever. And, you know, it gets hard for them in that situation. So um, in that regard, I don't think I would take a pill or a whatever they put it in um, that would keep me young, you know, if I ever get to the point where I have kids or whatever. 
Um, if they choose not to take it and I'm taking it, I don't think I, I, I wouldn't be able to watch, you know, my kids die um, while I'm just, you know, kicking around. That's well, fair. yeah. I, and I get what you're saying, Ben. I think, um, I think my view on this, and I kind of will, I'll put it this way. I think the people that want to live forever or want to extend their life are the people that have either regrets in their life or have never bothered to try and fix a situation, which is probably a regret anyway. They, they've they got more to do with their life. So let me put it this way. The people that get to the end of their life and they've got regrets, oh, I never did or I never said or I should have done, then they're always wanting to extend their life. Um, and then you've got the people on the other hand that said, you know, I had a great book I should have written and I never wrote it. I wish I'd had the time to write it. Uh, okay, they're the people that I find want to live forever. Me, on the other hand, who is Benjamin Button, uh, who does nothing but get younger the older I get, and that's medically proven, folks. Uh, I don't you know, know how much you paid that doctor to say that. I, I've paid every doctor, apparently, because they all say it. Um, you know, uh, look, I've had... A big life. I've had a good life. Uh, do I have some regrets? Absolutely. There's things I probably would do, or if I could, I could change. Um, just from different perspectives. But that's life. Life's messy. Life's not. Life's not easy, and you're gonna make some mistakes. Um, would I want to live forever? No. Hell no. Um, would I want to extend my life? As I sit right now um, in my early to mid years, uh, <laughs> 25 or some other age unknown. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, I, you know, I don't think I'd want to extend my years. Um, the thing about life is life's a journey and you learn as you go. Um, you know, I think probably people need to learn to deal with life as they live it. It's the people that don't want to deal with life as they live it that want the magic pill. What do you think, Josh? Well, okay, so I'm on the complete opposite end of the spectrum here. Of course you are. Um, so being the, being the youngest... Um, of the group here tonight would i want to stay you know young agile and you know for longer than you know than normal yeah i would i would take that option if somebody could, like if i could get to i don't know like late 20s or 30 and like stop aging for you know 20 30 years i would take it um why because Dude, the back end of that's going to suck, though, because once all that age catches up to you, it's going to be a slap in the face. Yeah, probably. Like, you're, but... you're going to break. <laughs> like, literally, you'll be 30 for 30 years, and then all of a sudden, you'll be like, no more pill, thank you, and then you're going to stop taking it one day, and your spine is going to snap in half, and you're going to shit yourself, and you're going to wonder why you stopped <laughs> taking the pill. All right, that's that's not part of the hypothetical here, but... <laughs> But the reason that I would want to stay young for longer is because there's so, so many more things I want to do as a young person than as an old person. Like, like, like current working setup, and I know this is a topic for another time, but like you get, you work, you know, 45 years, you get to 65 or whatever and retire. And then at that time you have the, the free time available to go travel different countries, but you know, how much fun are you going to have, you know, like hobbling around everywhere as an older person? I mean, I don't know. If your dad, if your dad, 
if you're a dad, apparently you're going to travel to countries and hop, skip, and jump around because you just get younger with each passing year, apparently. Right, yeah, but you guys get my point, though. Like, I would much rather go and travel and be young doing it rather than wait until my golden years, as they're called, to do it then. Um, that makes sense. You know, I think... And, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and just from from a medical perspective as well um that a lot of disease and stuff that humans deal with now is due to you know you get older and those you have what's called telomeres at the end of your chromosomes which is junk dna um so every time your dna replicates it it cuts off it like the replication process isn't perfect so it cuts a little bit of that telomere off and then once that telomere is gone it starts cutting into the good you know dna um, well, that's where you get, you know, degenerative diseases, you know, like Alzheimer's or, you know, that sort of thing. So if I could stay younger in like a healthy state for longer, I wouldn't have to deal with, you know, those you know, diseases or afflictions. Like, so yeah, I would absolutely want to stay young. Well, and that's why when I first answered, I kind of said it's a loaded question because it depends. Um, as far as what dad was saying, the people that are living with regret, that ties back into those people not knowing how to manage their time, like we talked about a little while ago. Um, so those people had, you know, didn't have that balance and want more time to try and figure that balance out. But, you know, time time waits for no man. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's that. But then, you, you know, as, as part of the degenerative disease thing, then I can see why you would, why you would want to take that. Um, but, you know, that gets into dangerous territory where, where mankind wants to start playing God with things. Um, I feel it could be helpful, um, perhaps, if you were to um, identify, because we are getting to this point where people are going to be able to identify diseases or things that could afflict them later on, even as young as babies in the womb. Um, we kind of do now. Right, which you can kind of do now, and it's only going to get more sophisticated, I guess. Um, but you could, I guess at that point for medical reasons, give, give a person the, that pill or whatever that keeps them younger for longer so that perhaps, um, a cure or something can, can come around in the time that, that they've, you know, put their aging on, on hold that way they can get a cure before a degenerative disease takes hold of them. Right. Um, Hang on. I think I think mom's got something to say on this, but in terms of putting things on hold, isn't that just the same as Austin Powers and cryogenically freezing yourself? But that's again a whole nother topic for another yeah, day. Yeah. Let's hear what mom has to say on this topic, particularly after Josh said hopping and skipping around the country's younger. That was me, but okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, you guys. Um you know, I, I don't think I would because you look at people who have lived for a hundred years, they have seen so much change, which is amazing. But, I'll, you know, my whole thought of it is you're going to get tired. You're going to get tired of doing the same thing. When I say same thing every day is you're getting up, you're living, you're not aging you're not having that experience as your peers are having. Um, So you may be sitting there at 70 looking like you're 30 or 40 and your peers are who elected not to do this look 70 and are feeling that age, but you're the same age, but you don't look the same age. Your body isn't aging the same way and you know quite frankly after a while I think I would just be tired I'd be like I'm I'm done I've I've done what I want to do I don't want to see any more of this change I don't want to see what's happening I'm just you know as we kind of posed this earlier in the in the week and sis put back out and she was on the chat that we have and she was like listen there, there's a time and a place and you just need to shut up and die. That's your time. <laughs> you have to do this. And to Josh's point of, you know, being crippled at 
hobbling around. You don't have to be decrepit at 65 when you retire. There's, there's no, there's no reason for that. You can be healthy if you start at that healthy lifestyle now and maintain that healthy lifestyle. Now you will have the energy, you'll have the stamina, you will have the money, you will have the know-how to party all night and not be totally blottoed and not be able to function the next day because you know how to party throughout the night and still function the next day because you've had that experience which is why you guys would never go party with us when you were old enough. <laughs> you knew we could outdo you. <laughs> I could have done it while I was in college, but not now. No, college. I'm 26 and I don't even, I, if I get absolutely wasted, like I don't wake up with a hangover, but I definitely don't feel good in the, ne- the next day. But that's I'll be home for two point. weeks. I'll put you up to it. The, the whole not... point of it is you will... You have to take care of yourself and you have to live your life and let it go through. Yes, there are things you can do to help your life be better. I don't know that I would want to prolong it. I mean, if if you have, mind. you know, if you have the ability to, to do different things and, and help your life be better quality, I'm for that, but not extending. I don't think I'm for that. Well, let me ask you a question. And I want to, I guess it goes along with what everyone's saying here. So they're they're developing technology. They're studying genetics. They're coming up with the idea that they can prolong people's lives. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. I've heard what you said, Josh, Mm -hmm. right? Why would someone want to prolong their life? Oh, because I want to do stuff that perhaps um, uh, I didn't do when I was younger or I can do it feeling younger when I'm older. Well, and again, this is a topic for another podcast. The problem we have is we haven't educated society into how to live life correctly. And because we haven't educated society into how to live life correctly, we're now developing drugs in order to prolong people's lives so they feel like they can live life to the fullest. But if they do prolong their life, will they use that time to live life to the fullest or will they squander it like they squandered their first part of life? Um, And I guess my question in all of that statement is this. Is it better to prolong your life so you live it to the fullest Or is it better to get a diagnosis of a terminal illness so you know approximately when you're going to leave the planet in order that you can live your life as you've always wanted to and then die in peace? Excellent question. Um, (laughs) So to answer the first part of that, I think if we if everybody extended their life, then yes, a lot of people would squander the time that they have and end up with, you know, the same amount of regrets. Um, as far as the uh, getting, you know, a diagnosis of a terminal illness. So you have, you know, a, a date that you're leaving the planet. Um, so you can live life. Um you know, so the last check you write bounces. Right, yeah, but you know, if you don't have a whole lot of you know money to begin with, you're kind of shit out of luck on that end. You're just stuck in a bad situation, and then you're like, oh, okay, this whole nightmare will finally be over in you know two years or whatever. Um, you know, I think the longer life gives you 
you know more time to you know accrue money with the magicalness that is compound interest um, so you have you know more money to you know go and do the things that you want here's the thing though is that really the be all and end all you you go find someone that's got terminal cancer you go find someone that has whatever disease it doesn't matter and as you guys know like the 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 podcast world does not know, uh, but you guys know. I've sat with people. I've held their hand. I've watched the tears roll down their face when they're leaving the planet. That that shit that we put and and that and that's a definite choice of words there. That that shit that we put emphasis on while we're living means absolutely nothing when you're leaving the planet. Nothing. No, look, trust me. And I I I, I say this in in all honesty, you know. And I've I've held the hands of millionaires. I've held the hands of people that have no money. And it all comes back to the same thing. And I'm not going to say what the same thing is because that's another podcast. But the millionaires and the paupers, you know, the millionaires didn't care how much money they had in the bank. That was not their deal. Because no one can. Look, let me ask you a question. And here, here's a really good one. How many millionaires were living in the United States in 1974? Well, obviously, I don't know that off the top of my head. Exactly. You know why? No one gives a shit. No one gives a shit. We put emphasis in this country on such the wrong crap. I'm not saying money's evil. I'm not saying it's bad. Next to oxygen, it's pretty necessary. All right? But when we spend our entire life, and I'll put it this way because it goes back to our first question, when we spend our entire life chasing purely money, at the expense of everything else, work-life balance. And we want to extend our life purely to maintain finding money. You got the wrong end of the stick, people. Wrong end of the stick. And you need to really start thinking about your life as a whole. Mom's got a finger up. She wants to cut me off and tell me I'm wrong. No, no, no. The... It's a very, very, very valid point. And while Deb was talking, I was like, what is the name of that movie with Morgan Freeman and Jack Nicholson that had, it's the bucket list, where he's a multimillionaire and he's a mechanic that made the life choice of not going to college and being a teacher, but to get married and support his family. And do it. it comes down to the end. They're both at the end of their um end of their lives there's things happening jack nicholson's character who has all the money in the world only had a, you know he had a very minimal chance of surviving but he did and it, it, it's a very good look if you watch the movie with this in mind is this do i want this do i want that what does it mean to have more money in the end the money didn't matter because he learned from the from morgan freeman's character that those relationships you have with people, those things you do to um, keep those connections and to better yourself and to learn and continually do that in the end made a bit more sense than all the money he made because he had to rebuild those relationships. Right. And I think something may have got lost in translation here, my argument, but I'm not arguing that, you know, you extend your life just for the sole purpose of making money. 
but rather that you know you can you have more time to like visit countries that you want to go see like go you know to you know africa to see the serengeti or whatever because like you may not have enough time on earth you know normally to to go see all of the places that you want to go see or do all the things that you want to go do no, and, that, and no, it didn't get lost in translation, Josh. I understand what you're trying to say. No, truly we do. But everything that you're trying to say in terms of go to the Serengeti and see that, uh, go dive in South Africa in a cage and watch the Great Whites, um, do all of that sort of stuff. Guess what that takes? Yeah, it uh, takes money. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it all does, like literally. And I, the thing is, you can spend your life trying to accumulate money or you can spend your life trying to accumulate experiences and then translating those experiences to the next generation. If you're extending your life, most of the time you're extending your life purely because you have forfeited something. You forfeited experiences or you forfeited money and you regret one of the other, right? right. So, yeah, we moved it into the realm of money and, and, and that was just because it's an easy target. Um, but I get what you're saying. Oh, I want to visit the Serengeti. My, my view in life right now from where I sit is you know what? Go visit the Serengeti. Spend the five or six or ten or twenty or whatever thousand dollars. Go do it. Go go out. Go on a safari. Go go do it because you know what? If you wait, you will probably never do it again. Do, does it cut into how much you earn later in life? Maybe, maybe not, you know, and that, again, we're, we're, we're covering about four or five podcasts in this one <laughs> question because, because there's so many different answers to this question. But, I mean, to me, again, I come down to the original thing. If you're wanting to extend your life, it's usually because you've got regret, regrets. 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 Because we're chasing rabbits with wops. <laughs> so uh, normally that's the way it goes. But I see a hand up from the guy with the headphones on because it's ultra cool. Go back. No, not ultra cool. I've just joined the Zoom because this is the most quiet I've ever been when the family's been together in my life. No. It's, ag it's yeah, aggravating no, it's me because I have things to say and I, everybody just keeps talking. So now I know how everybody else feels when I won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um i taking it taking it way way back way back um to dad's i guess original two questions um one was about i can't even remember the first one but the other one about terminal illness and and that kind of oh no i remember the first one it was about whether people would squander their um second chance at life i i agree with josh that most people probably would and there would be a small group of people that would probably look at it as people that have had a near-death experience or cancer and survived or whatever um and looked at it and been like okay this is my second chance at life i'm gonna live it how i should have been living the first let me know the first go around so there's people that would take it like that but i do think that the majority of people are too selfish um, to look at it like that and will um and will squander it um as far as you know terminal illness like knowing when you were going to leave the planet i i feel like um those people live a lot more honestly um than the rest of us who don't know when we're going to check out and i think a lot of people see that but they don't take a lesson from that and they don't look at that and go, well, this person's, you know, checking out and they're living how they always wanted to live. But what's stopping me? Do I need, I don't need to have a terminal illness or a set date of, of when I'm gonna, when I'm gonna, you know, check out and, and punch my ticket out of here. 
So, you know, what's stopping me from doing that? And a lot of people, like we said, it's, it's money, but you can, you know, given that you don't have a terminal illness and like we've talked before with planning and things, you can, you know, live your life to the fullest extent that you want to, um, and not have to worry about the money aspect of it too much, as long as you've planned and, and saved and done and done things, which I'm sure you, y'all have talked about on another podcast about, you know, what to do with your money so you can make more money so you can do some things. It's maybe fun. you touched on it. Maybe you touched on it. Maybe you haven't. I don't know. There's a snippet, a little teaser trailer for your, for another podcast. Two minute um, but, but yeah, so I guess what I'm saying is don't, don't wait for something to happen to you to, to want to live your life to the fullest extent and don't wait around for a magic pill to extend your life. Um, so you can do the things you want to do, get out there, do them now, take care of your mind, take care of your body. And then you can be like dad and be young at, at a middle age that will remain undisclosed 25 or some other age unknown. Right. (laughs) Yeah, but there's no reason to to wait, and I, I might get it. I might be getting a late start on that now. I'm, you know, four years off of thirty, so better late than never, I guess. Good points, all valid points. Yeah. Dust. And Final thoughts. Yeah, I think maybe my viewpoint will change later in life. Maybe when I'm mom and dad's age. Bro, but um, you're my age. I'm 26 and I'm already tired of life. So just get ready <laughs> for that. But so uh, by I the guess... time you're our age at 32, your viewpoint may change. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, finish his final thoughts. He's closing this out. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my viewpoint may change the older I get. And I kind of accept that aging is, you know, the natural part of life. Um, but until that point, um, I want to stay young. For as long as I can, and I want to experience things while I'm young, um, not when I'm old. Well, just be vegan like that, and you'll age backwards and you can experience things. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Hey, um, mom and dad. dad, thank you. <laughs> All right, mom and dad, do you have any final thoughts on this? You know, just um, I guess my final thought on this would be. Take care of yourself. Do, um, you know, self-care is very, very important. And that includes your mental health, your physical health, your emotional health. Take care of all of that. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Get out there. If all you can do is manage to walk around the apartment building or around your block to start with, doesn't matter. Just get out and do some physical activity. Get those endorphins going. Make healthier choices with your eating. Make healthier choices with people that are in your life. Have that balance. Budget your time wisely. And enjoy life. You get one shot. Make it count. Yeah, I think that's good. You get one shot and you got to make it count. Uh, You know, I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I just see how it is. and that's just my opinion and God's as well. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I think the thing is live life, live life to the fullest, however you perceive the fullest of living life to be. And on top of that, live you. Mm-hmm. Don't try and live society. Don't try and live what other people think you ought to be, what your family thinks you ought to be, what your partner thinks you ought to be. Live you. Because in the end, if you're true to yourself, you'll be true to those around you because you'll attract those that appreciate you for you. If you want to lie to yourself and lie to others, it's always going to end up in a ball of flames and that's never going to work out well. Uh, So live you, live life to the fullest and live life to the best and um, 
figure out how you want your life to look and plan it and then live it. And uh, you won't have to worry about trying to live another 40 or 50 years. Ben. Um, my last little bit that I want to say is, you know, in, in doing all of that, uh, make sure that you don't become selfish. Okay. Take a lesson from the guy who has, who's had to learn this the hard way very recently. Um, and it took way too long for, for this person, for me to, to realize this. And now I'm stuck cleaning up the pieces. Um, don't, don't be selfish. Um, you know, take care of your mental health, take care of your physical health, do hobbies and things that you enjoy doing, but don't dedicate yourself to them so much that you neglect um, other important aspects of your life. Yeah, that's, I think that's that's pretty much it. Just sum it up in, in one sentence. Don't be a selfish yeah, I... prick. All right. And that uh, that brings us to the end of the episode. Uh, thank you so much to, for listening. If you listened all the way to the end, uh, you're a real trooper. Um, but uh, until next week, uh, I will say goodbye. Um, but if you have a question that you want us to answer on the podcast, please feel free to reach out and email us. That email is in the video description down below. Um, so I've been Josh. I'm on. I'm Matt, and I'm always right. I'm Ben, and I'll make an effort to be here a little bit more often than I have been. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell.